Hey everyone, I'm Risa Morimoto. Super excited today because we're going to take you along with us um, as we take our mom to see a cannabis doctor for the very first time. Uh, our mom has had Parkinson's for many, many years now and it's quite advanced at this point. It's really, really horrible to watch anybody that you love suffer like this. She takes a lot of prescription pills for it. Um, some help, some not so great. Uh, so just trying to find alternative ways to give her more comfort. Dr. Chin has been treating patients with cannabis for many, many years. And so I am really, really excited to see what she's going to say and what kind of possibilities there are there for my mom. So this is going to help people with, um, it's helped many people with Parkinson's. Mm. So that's why we're here. How long have you been um, treating patients? With cannabis, my husband and I started uh, 2001 wow. because it legalized, medical cannabis legalized in California in 1996 here in New York, since it's still relatively new, only three years, um, patients do their own research. Right. Mm -hmm. Doctors don't initiate the conversation usually, um, unfortunately. But Parkinson's was one of the first things that had passed in New York because it works so well for the muscle spasm, the contractions, the constipation, um, and the overall anxiety mm -hmm. that comes with Parkinson's. Um, and I know there is a psychosomatic component to it, but when your body is uh, always contracting, even if you were looking at Noriko now and it looks like she's relaxed, but internally she feels like she there's fasciculations. Mm -hmm. She actually feels like she's moving. So that has that takes a toll on both the nervous system, um, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So your body doesn't really quite rest, right. even even during oh. sleep. So the anxiety level increases. So it's not only you know a psychological thing; it's both a physiological thing too. So what's wonderful about the medical cannabis? It really brings that anxiety down, as you know, along with the uh, physiological component of the muscle spasm and the contractions and the pain. Um, but decreasing anxiety helps the patient feel much more grounded and at ease. Yeah, it really mm -hmm. uh, can be a game changer and make the patient feel a lot more comfortable. So it might make her feel, a, not dizzy, but floaty. You know, if like she had her first you know, sip of alcohol and it feels a little like, wow. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like that in the beginning, only because she's never had cannabis before. So her receptors are not open mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. After a week or two of taking it, the receptors you know, sort of become more responsive and sort of soak it up like a sponge. So she feels less of those effects. Mm -hmm. Should we look out for any other? Sometimes patients or? will feel um, uh, palpitations. Um, that it's like sort of an increased heart rate. My age also her age. Her age is okay. To take yes, it? my oldest patient is one o two, with Parkinson's. I find it uh, more recently. It's hard for her to get the words out? Of course, because so. during progressive Parkinson's, the voice gets lost, the swallowing, uh, so, the air yeah. is a little bit slowed down um, in terms of full, you know, lung excursion. Um, so what the, what the medical cannabis does will help relax the smooth muscles, and that will help. So if she's already going through speech, you might find an improvement mm. uh, in her progress That's great. for her swallowing, mm -hmm. her swallowing mm -hmm. and her speech. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. She had the uh, barium swallow test mm -hmm. done, and they could see that she was aspirating. Okay. It was silent aspiration, so they were like, you know, very nervous about that, potentially, you know. Pneumonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, they said, use the thicket, puree the foods. You know, she's sick and tired of the pureed food. Oh, I know. You know yeah. It doesn't look as appetizing. Um, but uh, her appetite's fantastic. Good. The weight gain is not happening. And is that is that common in PD? Yes. 
Yeah, so the weight loss is common. Also, the, the medications, mm -hmm. you know, so there's a lot of medications in your system that decreases the appetite, um, decreases the metabolism. So the medical cannabis is going to increase your appetite quite a bit. Mm -hmm. She is going to really be a little voracious mm -hmm. and want to snack more. And that's fine yeah. um, because, so so medical cannabis does an array of things and a lot of patients will say, well, is, it sounds like a miracle, but it really can eliminate six different medications. You know, really? it can eliminate um, your appetite medication, the nausea medication, constipation medication, pain medication. So it really makes a difference. And when you cut out the, the polypharmacy, you'll notice that maybe she's less tired Maybe she'll feel like, you know, being more active socially, physically, her appetite will increase, her bowel movements will get a little more regular. Because when you add a lot of medications, sometimes those medications may or may not interact with each other. And that's why the, your physician had said, well, maybe she's on too much medication and we start yeah. cutting back. So c medical cannabis allows you to really cut back on a lot of the medications pretty quickly. Yeah, because when we started with the meds in 2008, she was 123 pounds. 123, okay. So that's, you know, 10 mm -hmm. years ago. So now she's down to 73, 74 pounds, okay. which is a huge difference. And then to be on the same amount of medication, you know, even for uh, 73 pound woman, um, I think it's just too much, too much medication in our okay. system. So that's the reason why he wanted to back off. Is she on you a blood what? thinner for the stroke? No, she had a hemorrhagic, so. Okay. Um, so, th I mean, in general, these don't counteract with uh, the medical cannabis, which is great. Um, what what I'd like for you to do is try and space the medical cannabis about two hours apart from the other medication, if that's possible, just in the beginning so we can see uh, if there's any adverse reaction, and we'll monitor that the first week, and then um, we'll follow up with a phone call, and then we can adjust the cannabis medicine uh, to make it a little bit more practical for her routine. Noriko, you'll be getting plant medicine, so the, the medical marijuana plant is coming in an oil form. So you'll be taking an oil form by mouth three times a day. So after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? Um, and the oil form, so it looks just like this, like a dropper bottle, and it comes with a syringe, and you will pull the medicine out of the syringe like that, okay? okay? and then you put it uh, either under her tongue or you could put it in her food. Oh. Like if she's gonna have some soups or broth, I would put it like on the teaspoon to make sure she's getting it. Yeah. Instead of mixing the whole thing and maybe she doesn't finish it. Yeah. Um, and she'll do that after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, you know, consistently. And that is CBD oil. Mm -hmm. And CBD oil has no euphoria. There's no high to it. It won't affect her uh, psychoactivity. Um, but you should notice um, it will decrease the muscle spasm, decrease the pain, it will help with the bowel movements as well. Now for the pain, we're going to give her another formulation for pain. So she'll have two bottles. Um, this one she'll take consistently. The other one for pain, um, she'll take it as needed every four to six hours. And I'll type up the instructions for you, mm -hmm. okay? And the pharmacist that you'll see in Long Island will also review this with you and type it out and show you the medicine and show you how to use it. So I could go to any pharmacist? There's a there's a designated dispensaries that are regulated by the Department of Health in New York. And I recommend only using the designated dispensaries, yes. not, you know, health food stores right. or vape shops right. because those products are not regulated and you right. don't know what you're buying. Right. So right. this is a prescription you know, it's like a prescription. It's a mm -hmm. recommendation for medical cannabis. You'll be getting an ID card, a mm -hmm. caregiver ID card. Noriko will get an ID card, which is like a license, mm -hmm. and um, and any other caregivers mm -hmm. you want to designate. Okay. So you can just go pick it up. Okay. Okay. She has an option to smoke it. No, she doesn't want to use a vaporizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. You oh, don't want to smoke. No. No. <laughs> no. The other option is a vaporizer pen. 
and a lot of my Parkinson's patients do use it, um, but you you know you have to be comfortable with inhaling. It's a it's a vapor, so it's not a you're not burning plant. There's no smell to it, but patients that have really um, intense tremors will use the vaporizer right before dinner, you know, so, so they can they feed themselves. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Some patients that are working uh, still. No, she used to be very creative, painting mm -hmm. and writing, and now she's totally given up because it's just like Too she much. can't even. Yeah, she can't even. Okay. Hold the. Uh, I know, but with this, maybe you can. Sometimes the liver, right? This has to be processed through the liver. So if the liver is processing a lot of medications, which it is, uh, some of that doesn't get processed properly, you know. This goes straight into the bloodstream, which w why a lot of my Parkinson's patients end up liking it so much. When you use it, you feel relief and you see relief within 10 minutes. So it's instantaneous. This one can take over an hour. Oh. That's why you had mentioned to me, sometimes you take this an hour, an hour and a half, yeah, and you're, oh, something hour. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but this, you can see feedback pretty quickly. So if you know one, inhalation gives a delivered dose and you wait and it works then that's her sort of her, her her sweet spot that's her dose sometimes you might notice two inhalations is what gives her relief then you know two inhalations this one is a little harder to measure you know so we sort of that's why we talk you know quite often to see when I talk to you after a week we'll see how much she's used what the progress is and it's a little bit harder to to judge you know what that therapeutic window is mm -hmm. this one is pretty instantaneous but at the same time if she's not used to inhaling something um, this could be irritating for her even though it's a vapor and not uh, you know it's not like she's inhaling it through a bong or okay. she's rolling a joint which is a little bit more potent, <laughs> potent. Burning. yes that'd be fun though no mom <laughs> <laughs> will she get sleepy the one that's for pain will make her feel not sleepy, but very relaxed. So it might appear that she's sleepy, um, but it'll make her feel very relaxed. If she takes too much of it, you know, let's say she took um, double the dose that I've given her, then she'll probably be a little bit sedated. But we're starting at a very, very low dose. And that's what's the beauty about using the syringe is that we can control the dosing rather than a capsule you know, uh, where we're committed on what the dose is. This is, we can really monitor her mm -hmm. in small increments and, and sort of journal her process. And so would you say cannabis is effective, the most effective with certain kinds of illnesses? It really depends on the, the patient's case. It depends on other um, things that they had before, like your mom's had a stroke, so that complicates things a little bit. Um, you know, some patients do well, some patients it doesn't help at all. So that's why it's great to work as a team, you know, with the MDs and the family, so that we can uh, dial in and see if the medical cannabis can work, you know, integrated with other, other modalities. Sometimes it's acupuncture, massage, cannabis, and the prescription medications. Sometimes the acupuncture doesn't work at well, as well, and it works better with water therapy. And so mm -hmm. we try and look at the whole patient and That's really mm -hmm. fit in pieces of the puzzle. There's never a one size fits all. Right. Um, medical cannabis, there's over 1,500 chemical variants and strains of cannabis. So sometimes one formula works better than the other formula for different Parkinson patients too, because it's plant medicine. Mm -hmm. So. It's a little bit trickier to deal with, I think, than prescription medication. And where is this manufactured? This New York. In New York. Everything is made locally. Yeah. Everything is processed upstate New York, and every dispensary is vertically integrated. So what that means is they have to grow the plants, and they process the plants, and then they bring it to the retail market, um, and they're accountable for all cool. those steps. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Health tests those batches and makes sure. Um, they're compliant, it's organic, solvent-free, and it's actually, mil the milligrams is um, true to the bottle, mm -hmm. okay? New York, I think, is one of the strictest in the United States. 
So is that for for every state then? No, not every state is like this. Oh. Um, California for a long time was not like this, and I, they're trying to become this way. Say other states are trying to become this way as well. So uh, New York waited a long time for uh, passing medical marijuana law, but you know, as a physician, there's there's pros and cons. You will see a pharmacist when you when you get this medicine. So the pharmacist, the physician, we work together. Mm -hmm. Everything gets logged into a database. So when you see the neurologist and the neurologist puts in her date of birth for the prescription monitoring program, the neurologist also sees, oh, okay, you're seeing Dr. Chin for medical mm -hmm. cannabis. Mm -hmm. And the pharmacist logs in when you picked up the medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. So everything is sort of um, being monitored so you're not just sort of <laughs> out there on your own floating around in a dispensary and maybe you talk to a bud tender and maybe you got some this and some of that and we don't know if it works. So if you're in the emergency room and you forgot to tell them you're on medical cannabis, they don't know, right? So that happens in other states. But in New York, everything is in one place. Right. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, so that's the thing too. When you're, when you're buying things from a different state, like Nevada, California, you can walk in and buy anything. You really don't know what's good. Right? So you buy a couple of things and you experiment, and especially with the elderly, they can get scared if they feel out of control. So with the gummy here from Nevada, it's 25 milligrams of THC. So the cannabis plant is made up of CBD and THC, most simplistically, right? That's what I'm, we'll just, well, there'll be other plant compounds, but CBD doesn't make you high, THC makes you high. So this gummy is THC. So if she took the whole thing and she's not used to medical cannabis, she will feel euphoria. She might feel her heart rate increase. She might feel she a little said, dizzy. Yeah, like, the room spins a little bit. She might feel a little bit nauseous. Yeah. Now, luckily, you can't overdose on medical cannabis. You could take this whole pack of gummies and you won't overdose. In the history of time, there's never been an overdose because there's no cannabinoid receptors in the brain stem that control the heart and the lungs. Right? So you'll feel very uncomfortable, but the feeling goes away <laughs> eventually. Um, with narcotics, with other pain medications, you take too much, it can be quite dangerous. So usually with a gummy, you take a sliver of it, um, but it's hard to, to figure out what the dosing is because mm -hmm. it's not like you can cut it and know that it has a uniform dosing amount. With oil um, or the vaporizer, we know that there's a there's a designated dosing amount. So when I when you come back and call me and say, oh, mom did great with 0.1, then I know how many milligrams that is. And then I can put that in the chart and we can sort of keep track of her progress instead of saying, well, one gummy, maybe we took a half a gummy. <laughs> did she get it in yeah. her mouth? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult yeah. mm -hmm. that way. So she says, her circulation is not good anymore on the left side, which is her good side, and so it always like feels like it's asleep, tingling. And mm. There is a cream that you can try. We can see if this cream is a CBD salve. Mm -hmm. It may or may not work, um, and you can order it. It's a hemp CBD. So CBD so is, is a natural anti-inflammatory. So a lot of my um, stroke patients, my diabetic neuropathy patients, when they complain of the circulation being bad, like the foot feels like it's asleep or it feels like I have a sock on all the time mm -hmm. and I'm touching my toes, there's just no, it doesn't feel like it's a part of my body. Mm -hmm. The CBD cream will work locally and give some relief. Oh, awesome. um, It's not, you know, long lasting because mm -hmm. you have to use the cream um, and then after a few hours you reapply. Okay. What she will notice with the medical cannabis is dry mouth. Sometimes my Parkinson's patients appreciate that because there is less drooling. So that takes care of that. Some of my patients don't appreciate that because that means they have to drink a lot more and have to go to the bathroom more. There is your temporary card. Congratulations.